How's it going, everybody? Chris Card's back with another Through the Mail Monday. Our first of five returns today comes to us from San Fran, California. Hope everyone had an unbelievable weekend. My weekend was mind-blowing as always. Got a grip of cards in here. Or some vintage cards that are just super thick. Looks like we've got Hobie Landreth. Hobie Landreth was a light-hitting backup catcher for the majority of his 14-year career. He had a few starting gigs along the way. He was the very first ever New York Met taken in the 1961 expansion draft. The expansion draft that also saw, of course, the Houston Colt 45s also added to the league. And then, of course, they became the Houston Astros later on. Hobie was a Cincinnati Red and a Red Leg back when they changed their name to Red Legs to make sure there was no confusion that they were uh, communist or not, which is a true story. There you have it, guys. Hobie Landreth, Casey Stengel picked him number one overall. So it was the very first Met in Met history, and I could not find a 1962 Topps card that actually had him as a Met. So, so I just sent what I had. I'll find a 62 Topps card to send him, though. Maybe have him inscribe it like... First Mets player or something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool to have in the PC. A lot of those 62 Met cards are pretty underwhelming. I think a lot of the players, they used archived photos because their hats are airbrushed out of their old uh, team logos. And I think there's a very few photos of the Mets in an actual Mets uniform on those 62 Tops cards. But anyway, I digress. There you go, guys. $5 a card. So straight cash, Hobie. Send him some money and he'll sign your card for you. Good guy. Thank you very much. On to the next. All right. Return numero dos comes to us from San Bernardino, California with my Hot Wheels stamp. Purple Passion. And we have Tom Hall. Tom Hall. Ten-year career. He was a Southpaw. Pitcher for the Twins for four years. Pitcher for the Reds for four years and a handful of years with several other teams, including the Mets. Did not find a Mets card there. There's him with the Twinks and the Reds. Signed nicely in blue Sharpie. Tom Hall, not to be confused with Tom T. Hall of Harper Valley PTA fame and other wonderfully written country bluegrass songs. There's his information right there. He was a very good starter for a few years for the Twins, and of course, he was a good reliever as well. Pretty good pitcher in his 10 years in the bigs. Thank you, Mr. Hall, for the signed cards. On to the next. Return number three comes to us from Carol Stream, Illinois. You TTMers out there probably have a pretty good idea of who this is. My only question is, how many did he sign for what I sent him. So I sent him two cards here. Let's pull it out and show you who it is. It's going to be Ryan Sandberg signed the 2020 Ginter foil card. Those foil cards are really nice to get signed. So I've been working on that, sending a few of those out. And the Mojo or Silver Pack 35th anniversary throwback not signed. So I sent him $10 and two cards. Usually my previous attempts have been $5 a card. I'd send him four cards and 20 bucks and he'd sign three so basically since then i've just been sending him two cards and 10 bucks and i've been getting successes so apparently he's raised his rates wish there was a little bit of transparency i wish we knew what he was asking for so we could decide what we want to send him what we're going to get signed and this that and the other some are sending him four cards and 20 bucks only getting one sign so I feel lucky that I got one signed for $10 because apparently it's probably more than that. But we're not sure. He has no price list or anything like that. So you TTMers out there watching this video have any idea what it takes to get a signed card from Ryan Sandberg now, please let me know. I know he signed with a third party, but he's still doing through the mail apparently. So I don't know. But there you guys go. Uh, if you send $10 and two cards, he'll probably sign one. That's my best advice for right now with ryan sandberg so there you have it go uh there you have it guys hall of fame 2005 16 years in a big 10 time all-star on to the next all right gang return number four comes to us from miami florida all right sweet we got ron marichelle again with the 2020 ginter foil and i sent him two foils 
a mini and a base from 2020 Ginter. Seems like Juan Marichal's in Ginter every single year, and I love getting them signed. So $10 a card for Juan Marichal, well worth it. Signature's still really nice. And they keep coming out with modern cards for him, and I like to get them signed because uh, set collectors find them highly desirable. And so I always got an extra one in there for trade. And there you have it, guys. Juan Marichal, 16 years in the bigs. 1983 Hall of Famer. Crazy win percentage. 10-time All-Star. Our second 10-time All-Star for this week's TTMM. And, of course, our second in a row 2020 Ginter signing. I think I got a Brooks Robinson out there as well. So hopefully I get that one back soon. Don't forget, gang, he does have a fee. It's $10 a card. Pretty good value for that, $10 a pop, all of a sudden looking pretty good considering all the other Hall of Famers have been increasing their uh, fee requests. So there you have it, guys, Juan Marichal. Let's get on to our last return of the day. And our fifth return of the day comes inside the dreaded body bag. When your mail gets chewed up, spit out by those machines that Trump didn't dismantle and sell for scrap, this is what they give you. They put the bits and pieces that are left inside a plastic bag, put a we're sorry we destroyed your mail note inside it, and you get what you get. So let's see how bad this is. I feel there's cards in here. I, f I feel like it's, it's torn open pretty good, but I feel like the cards are still in the envelope. I'm not sure what shape they're in, but there's definitely cards in there, so... I've gotten a few of these in the past. Not too many of them for the most part. The USPS deserves a lot of credit as far as getting me the hundreds of requests I send back to my mailbox in one piece. This is not very easy to open. Working on it and getting there. There we go. It's open. And there is the tour upside. There is the We Care letter that's inside. Not very interesting. We'll not spend too much time on that. Here's the envelope. What we're all interested in. It looks like it was taped shut kind of a little bit. And chewed open. I see an index card in there that was signed. That is not looking very good. Gonna need some scissors here. If I put any force into this envelope, I'll probably destroy whatever's inside of it. Assuming it's not already in, uh, destroyed. So we got the index card right there. We got some vintage in there that looked okay. Looked okay. Albie Pearson, it looked like. And yes, there it is. Albie Pearson, AL Rookie of the Year, 1958. AL All-Star, All-Star 1963. Um, maybe he had a John 316 there on the bottom. He is super team Jesus. He is an ordained minister as of 1973 and has devoted... Pretty much his life outside of baseball to the good Lord. And there you have it, guys. Albie Pearson, there were the angels inscribed with the Rookie of the Year inscription and the All-Star inscription on, looks like, all of these cards. There's a 62 tops. Those are in ballpoint pen. And the other two are in blue Sharpie. There's one in blue Sharpie. Not sure why he decided to do the Sharpie on the one and the pen on the others. I could probably cut that index card up a little bit and make it look nice again. It'll look a little narrower, but at least um, cut that John and the rip part out, unfortunately. Hate to lose that, but it will make uh, it look much better. Pen looks really good on these vintage cards. Scott from Reindeer Studio mentioned this a few weeks ago in one of his videos, and I agree with him. It's certainly... A period piece and using a ballpoint pen makes it look a lot more cohesive with the time period of the card as opposed to the Sharpie, which was not around in 1962. Nonetheless, uh, still looks good either way. Albie Pearson, these are $5 a card, so I said them 4 and 20 bucks. Albie Pearson played nine years, six with the Angels. Shortest player of his era, 5'5", 140 pounds, super tiny dude. His mom was 5'1", his father was 5'5". He was an only child, so he had no shot at getting too tall. But it didn't stop him, didn't deter him. He used Bobby Shantz as inspiration. He was 5'6", and Bobby Shantz could get it done. So there you have it, guys. Our final return, our body bag return, came out better than expected. Cards look good. Everything except perhaps the uh, index card getting chewed up a bit, but not bad overall. There you have it, folks. Through the Mail Monday, number 96 in the books. Check out this week's haul. I had so many cards to display. I had to stand up to take the picture. Look at all of those inked up. Super nice. 
Ryan Sandberg, Mystery Fee, Juan Marichal, as good as always. Hobie Landreth. Spent a lot of money on these cards. I had a bunch of $5 cards. I had everyone had a fee except Tom Hall. So there you have it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's Through the Mail Monday. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this week's returns. Please like the video and, of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I do this every single Monday. Would love to have you join us. It's a lot of fun. And I'm also now on Instagram, ChrisCards86. That's ChrisCards86 as in 86 met. So Easy follow. I'll post stuff up periodically, pretty much um, every day or every other day, and uh, preview some videos and do some TTM stuff on there. Check it out. I'm kind of forcing myself to learn it. I never liked the the format and how it worked beforehand, but I've been screwed around with it of late, and I'm getting used to it. So I figured, why not make it part of my repertoire? And if you guys want to follow me on there, that'd be pretty cool. That's it, guys. I still got that... Um, gallery to open up which i told you on saturday when i opened up those terrible bowman platinum cards that i was going to do and of course as always i promised and did not deliver any sort of opening on sunday so i'll have to do that this week can't wait to open those cards up so i'm not delaying it for any other reason except for the fact that I've just been a little busy a little busy that's it i was watching the 1965 world series today on mlb network had the vintage classic games on uh, Vin Scully calling a game. Uh, really, really fun though to see those games every now and then. Al Worthington was on there, who I just got back, what, a couple weeks ago. And a lot of TTM guys on there. For A lot of the vintage guys, I noticed, um, you know, Sandy Koufax is pitching. Everyone knows that. But, of course, Al Worthington threw two scoreless innings, and I was pretty excited. As a kid that wasn't born until, you know, 20 years later, uh, that stuff's pretty exciting, watching those vintage old games and seeing these people when they were young and, yeah, in their prime and playing and just, yeah, I love those vintage games on the MLB network. A lot of fun, especially when there's signers on probably both teams that I've gotten before in the past. So super cool. Of course, legendary players. You see Sandy Koufax hang one and you're like, man, he can, you know, he, he made mistakes too. You know, you, you put a lot of mythical energy into the past players such as a Koufax and then you watch them on a replay you know, 60 years later, and you're like, oh, you kind of kind of hung that one. That wasn't a very good pitch. So pretty funny to kind of watch those old games, and especially when you're not really sure what the score is because there's no on-screen display. So that's that's always kind of frustrating. You're like, oh, what the hell's the score? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's it, gang. Hope everyone has a great week. I'll be back with another video or two. And, um, yeah, that's it, guys. See ya.